All right, guys, so some of you are still having issues with seams on edges. And so I'm going to go ahead and kind of talk about this in this one, do a couple practical examples of what you should be thinking about when UV mapping things and also how you're baking them. Okay, so first up, this is a pretty standard setup. You do a beveled cube, right? And you're going to probably place the seams right here in the center line. Generally speaking, it's not always required. You can place them on the outside as well. But um, sometimes it actually looks worse that way. Sometimes it might look better. So you can shift your UV seams around if you really wanted to and try it different ways and see what works best in any given situation. But in this case, we're going to put seams down the center. We can't do that with the bevel modifier, so we have to apply it. You're going to go to a destructive workflow at some point or another. It's just a matter of when, not if. And uh, you're going to press U, Smart UV Project here. Okay, go to UV Editor. And you can see we have this set up. I'm going to select all these, and you can quickly just... Um, Go under UV and do seams from islands in this case. Happens to work out really well. It's kind of like auto unwrap, basically. But we can press U, we can unwrap. Instead of using angle base, we might use conformal. We could try to uncheck or check fill holes, play around with different settings here. All of this stuff comes into play when um, it comes to baking this thing. So just keep that in mind. And you can see this one actually didn't even add a seam right here for some reason. Hmm. Fix that real quick. And so will you unwrap? There we go. Okay. So the low poly is done. We're going to export this out real quick. Uh, I'm just going to go to the desktop, uh, cube LP, and I'm doing only the selected object. Okay. And the high poly is the same thing, but it has more bevels on it. Okay. So that's all we're doing on this one. Now, when it comes to prep for the low poly, just keep in mind it is uh, weighted normal, keep sharp, and then triangulate, keep normals. I max this out so I can manually go in and grab an edge and control E and mark it sharp if needed. These are shaded auto smooth as well. You see if I shade it auto smooth again, it resets this. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now um, let's go ahead and go through this process here. I gotta do the high poly now. And for the most part, the high poly you don't really have to do much to it, generally speaking. But if you wanted to add a weighted normal modifier to it, there's nothing wrong with that. I guess it works. Um, so you could do that and set it up the same way. If you want to triangulate it, it's preferable because a lot of times when you're baking highs to low polys, it's taking the high poly triangulation and the low poly triangulation and it's combining them together in the normal map. The, the triangulation is baked into the normal map, okay? So we're going to export this. And this is just going to be cube HP, okay? Let's go over to Substance Painter. This is going to be my next example, but we're going to start a new project. We're going to do the low poly cube, okay? 2048 Unreal Engine setup, direct X, compute tangent space per fragment, okay? All that fun stuff. So here's our model. It looks okay like this. And generally speaking, if you don't really need to do a high to low poly bake, don't do it. Do, like, if you can do like a mid poly workflow, do that instead. Um, and only focus on surface details if possible. That's, that's an option available to you. So uh, we're going to go to bake mesh maps. We're going to load in the high poly. Okay, using it to 2048. Yeah, I'm going to leave the rest alone for now. We're going to bake it. Okay, and you probably won't see this issue right off the bat. It's only when you start nitpicking your models you're going to start to see the issue, right? And um, it's not very visible, right? It's pretty smooth. It's not too bad. Let's put something glossy on there. And if you look very, very closely, a lot of times what's going to end up happening is you'll have this tiny little seam right here at the corner, right? And that's unavoidable. Okay, I've asked Adobe about this. This is kind of like a, a situation where it's just, you're not really going to be able to do much about it. Now, also keep in mind, in Substance, when you're looking at it in this viewport, this is a preview of the texture, right? When it exports, it actually turns into something a slight bit more high quality. So sometimes that gets minimized a little bit more. This is something that you're not going to be able to avoid, unfortunately, especially working from Blender. I've tried this in Marmoset as well you're not going to get a better result than this, okay, on these types of areas. And the reason for this is because of the angle of the corner, okay? So right here at this corner, on the low poly, this angle of this edge is just too much, okay? It's, it's, it has to have that kind of like shading setup. I don't know what's going on underneath the hood, but that's what's going to end up happening, right? And so that's what brings us to this next section. Um, well, we'll skip it for a second. We're, we're going to keep working on this one. So expect that to happen. This type of baking setup is really good for just, you know, regular props for the most part. If you're just trying to quickly bake things, you're not worried about like super 
uh, close screen space stuff, right? Like it's not a first person weapon and things like that. And you don't usually have to worry about that too much because most people will never notice it. Like if I throw a cheese on here, you can see what's happening. Um, there's obviously a scene here. Okay. Now we can go through this and patch it up by using clone stamp tool. I made a video about that before. Um, however, a lot of materials, if you're lucky, you can swap it from UV projection to triplanar projection and bam. Right. And so a lot of times this ends up kind of these little minor surface details masks that little issue almost entirely. You can't even see it that much. Right. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're doing super smooth surfaces, you're going to probably unwrap it more like an organic object using angle based UV mapping. You might um, try to stretch it in areas where you can, if possible, try to keep it all as like one UV shell. And um, that'll help out quite a bit. So when I load up this other one over here, you'll see that over here uh, looks like whatever this thing is. But let's go to its substance file, or excuse me, Blender file. Oh, did I not save it? I should have saved it. I don't think I saved it, guys. Oh, no, I did. I'm in my downloads folder, apparently. Oops. All right, so um, this is what the setup is over here. This is a subdivision model, so it operates a little bit differently. Here's your low poly, right? And here's the high poly. You can see kind of the difference there, but it's just a sub-D mesh. This low poly has a seam going right across the middle of it. You didn't see it probably, right? This is where it's at. So if we do the end result display here, this is what you're looking at in substance, okay? Now, why does this work? And why did you not see it? Well, first of all, let's go over there. First of all, I have triplanar uh, projection on, so it's already doing that. Uh, but let's turn that off for a sec. You use just that aluminum as an example. You still can't see it. Like, it's, it's really hard to see it, but it's there. It's just slightly there. Very tiny amount. Um, the reason why it's not as apparent as, say, the um, the cube there is because this model, this angle here for this edge where the seam is, is not as harsh, okay? And so sometimes this works out really well. Sometimes you get a really noticeable seam. Uh, but generally, if you're very careful in, in how you set up your high compared to your low poly, you don't have issues with these as much as you would think. So, um, you know, like, they're more comparable to each other. They're closer to matching in topology, right? That that seam, that, anti, that glancing angle or whatever you want to call it, it just isn't as bad. So that, that doesn't become as apparent in the model when you bake it. Um, and then once you add the triplanar on top of it, um, you're really going to have a hard time finding those little edges. And so this brings us back to the the root cause of the problem your high poly and your low poly aren't matching close enough generally speaking and also where you place your seams is extremely important you want to try to put them in cracks and crevices if possible usually you want to try to develop some kind of shell to your model where it's the seams are kind of on the edges of it hidden away right you don't want to put them you know right up in your face on the the facing angle right here or the facing uh, side right it's not usually a good idea but if you have to you really need to craft those areas a little bit longer and make sure you're getting everything to work just right and this is why in previous videos i say you need to develop this like back and forth relationship with uh, substance painter and bacon and blender you're going to go back and forth and tweak these things before you go trying to texture everything to completion you really need to pay attention to every seam and everything in your model make sure it's going just the way you want it now on the flip side, I'm going to do a video about this one a little bit later on, but if you watch the bacon video for substance, um, you can actually import models. You can link 3D meshes, right? And so if I wanted to do uh, the LP here, we can right click this bake model information. So uh, this has the ability to add a skew correction map. It's just basically a black and white map where you can skew between two different like normal maps basically baking setups so I'll, I'll show this one in another video uh, it's kind of an older technique but it's still very valid if you need it and also if you had like marmoset tool bag they have a skew correction system built into it pretty much if you didn't if you didn't know that so uh, very useful for extremely low poly models 
not so useful if you're trying to do like in your face first person weapons uh, you know those kinds of things you're going to want to use more polygons and you'll probably kind of naturally fix most of your issues like this one here whereas uh you know there's simple props and game objects that scene can become extremely problematic if uh, you just don't know what you're doing with it really so hopefully this enlightens you a little bit on it, how you can approach these kinds of situations you know just think about where you're placing your seams if your meshes are somewhat comparable and um think about you know think about using tri planner you may or may not want to do that clone stamp on top of it here in substance at least so those things are pretty big right anyways i hope this video helped you somehow and i'll check you out on the next one all right take care